Welcome everyone. It is great to see so many of you here, even though it's winter break and there are so many who are like away at their cabins and whatnot. But here we are and we are ready to start again. So today I have Linda Ewelson with me and Linda is a postdoc at uh, the Faculty of Theology and also a Marie Curie Fellow. Uh, and she's working on, as far as I could see, questions on um, uh, about identity and the interpretation and translation of the term sax in the letter of Paul. That is kind yes. of, as I understand it, like <laughs> the, the major project. And today she's going to talk with us about um, the social systems in transition toward a higher level of diversity in Galatians. Um, I think that most of you have been here before, so you know what will happen now. Uh, Linda will talk for 13 minutes and then we open up for questions and answers uh, for another 30 minutes. Um, you can put your um, questions into the chat function in Zoom if you're with us there, or you can move over to the mic, which is over there, if you want to ask a question here um, in, in the, um, or in person in this room. Linda, take it away. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> very, very glad that we could meet today. So I'm going to talk about Paul post letter to the assemblies in Galatia in relations to social system theory. This particular letter is highly concerned with the construct of collective identity and therefore social system theory is appropriate. Thus unity have to be constructed around an idea of sameness or are there other ways? As seen through the lens of social system theory, Increasing the level of diversity is the pathway to resilience, but it is often not an easy one. Resilience is here the capacity to, in the social system to retain its functioning, even in situations of hardship and stress. Paul's letter to the Galatians deals with the construct of collective identity, and more precisely with the question whether uniform uniformity in identity markers is important or not. Paul claims not. As a matter of fact, it seems very important to him that identity markers are not important. They affect nothing. And if, certain groups, if a certain group is enforced to adapt, that would be a sign not of inclusion, but of submission. That's the thing about signs, they change. Uh, a skull becomes a sign of poison, becomes heavy metal, becomes something else. What the sign, when a sign is moved from a setting to another, the meaning of the sign is transformed. It changes as well. And in this setting, the meaning of the Greek term sarx can be reassessed. Now we go in the other direction. We know what the desire of the flesh is, but I would argue Paul didn't. Or it was something else to him. First of all, he didn't know English, Paul lad. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't participate in the same general construct of meaning that we do, which is focused on the individual and possibly the salvation of the individual. Here I could hold up a picture of a Christi Stendhal and his book, Paul Among Jews and Gentiles. Actually, actually, I grew up in the same small village where he was born. So we are sort of the same flesh. Or he's part of my collective identity, my collective group. As Paul says in Romans, of course I care about Israel. They are my kin, they are my sarks. They are my kinship according to the flesh. In Galatians, flesh, sarx, could be read in the same way. When the collective identity or collective group demands something from the Galatians, in this case, male circumcision and separate tables, they do not have to agree. Paul himself consulted his prominent people in Jerusalem and wanted their approval, but was not submissive to them. He, when they did not stand up for the truth of the gospel, that is the open table fellowship, he confronted them publicly. The way of constructing a collective identity by conforming to an idea of sameness is not a fruitful one, even if they would 
stand there with the conform identity markers, the sense of solidarity, fellowship, and faithfulness that was the goal would not come. The identity markers affect nothing. They avail nothing by themselves. The signs are relevant only when participating in practices such as faithfulness, love, and grace. And these practices must come first. And then there's really no point in adding the markers of identity that would only co cause confusion. Paul emphasizes in Galatians that they are already included among the assemblies of God. They are, so to speak, Galatians in Christ. And therefore, if they would be re-initiated, that would seem to nullify their, their first inclusion rather than confirming it. In Paul's view, the message or gospel that they would have to change identity markers is a non-gospel. He fears that the promised inclusion would turn into submission. A sign cannot be moved from one setting to another without its meaning changing too. So to be more precise, having identity markers is just fine. Everyone has them and belonging to collective identities, but the identity markers doesn't avail anything. They are signs, not means. And if a sign is enforced, it becomes a sign of submission. Therefore, where the non-gospel demands adaptation, Paul suggests adoption. Paul suggests adoption instead of adaptation. Why then is there a reaction against the fellowship in diversity? Is not the open table fellowship beneficial to everyone? Jews, Greek, enslaved, free or freed, male, female. Social systems theory describes this well. In times of hardship and stress, the social system with a low level of differentiation, that is diversity, is easily afflicted by reactive emotions. For example, you have a stomachache, I get a stomachache as well. And if our problem solving then focuses on this emotional state rather than the problem that may have caused the stomachache, then we're in, pro in problem, uh, then we'll have trouble. Um, our problem solving strategies will not be efficient instead of asking, why do I have a stomachache or why do we have this emotional situation? Uh, we try to get rid of the emotion. In social systems theory, it's described that people commonly adopt uh, one or more of these following strategies. Distance, emotionally or geographically. Conflict or harassment, letting the steam out on someone who is not really in charge. And over and under functioning. The last strategy may include a sudden call for a strong leader while the rest step back and do not contribute with their resources and skills. So social systems with a high level of diversity is more resilient, that is better equipped to retain its functioning since it allows, uh, since it has access to all resources and allows its members to develop a diverse set of skills and interests without this being perceived as a threat toward the, toward the unity of the group. So social systems with a high level of diversity are more capable to handle change. And they also recover from trauma with less severe symptoms and more quickly compared to systems with a lower level of diversity. So, In other words, the idea of sameness is an obstacle to getting access to the competence and that already exists within the system and to the process of gaining more knowledge. Besides, systems constructed around an idea of sameness often finds it hard to stay emotionally connected in times of hardships and stress. Nevertheless, and here we have Galatians. If someone makes an attempt to increase the level of diversity within the system, this attempt is commonly met with hostility by others in that group. Furthermore, when the process of increasing the level of diversity 
the process of increasing the level of diversity often follow the same three phases pattern. Okay. First, the motives of the group or subgroup uh, are from or the person uh, are thrown into suspicion. Accusations in such situations often say more about the value system of the group than about the character or personality of the increasing party. In Galatians, according to Paul, uh, Peter fear, fears to be assessed as a sinner and a Gentile. And secondly, if the subgroup or person who makes an attempt to increase the level of diversity does not step back in line, he or she or the group is commonly threatened with exclusion. In Paul's view, the proponents for adaptation are highly committed to the Galatians, but for no good. According to Paul, they want to exclude the Galatians so that the Galatians will be committed for them instead. So yes, the threat of exclusion seems to trigger something very deep inside of most of us. And this is therefore a dangerous phase, highly dependent upon the solid recognition of human rights or other codes of dignity, or it can be nasty. However, the third phase, which will come to pass eventually, if the increasing party doesn't step back into line or give up or, or are marginalized or killed or excluded in other ways. The third phase is that the level of diversity is increased. And the social system is more resilient to the benefit of all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.